Hi, this is a brief discussion of a hypothetical sandwich shop uh, to explain the concept of bottleneck. So we'll talk about just three steps in this uh, hypothetical sandwich shop, which the first step is order, where the customer takes three minutes to place an order. Uh, then the order is prepared uh, in five minutes and it takes customers to four minutes to make the payment. Uh, and so then we'll look at the system and answer these questions on how many customers will be served in an hour, which step will be having the longest queue wait, uh, waiting time. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about this uh, possibility of uh, changing processing time at the order step. So let me introduce um, a tool called ExtendSim, which is a discrete event simulation tool. Uh, and this basically models uh, processes. You can model business processes, you can model uh, manufacturing processes and so on. Uh, so what this is showing uh, is uses, it uses these different icons to show different parts of a process. The first part is showing this arrow is showing a arrival process followed by a queue uh, and that is a queue for ordering. Uh, this activity box is showing where the actual order taking place. And so this is where the customer will spend three minutes if they didn't have to queue. Again, there's a queue for the prep sandwich step. And they, if they, there's no wait, they can go straight to the prep sandwich uh, and they will wait five minutes here. And then they move on to the next queue. Uh, again, there's, there's no wait, they move on and uh, take four minutes to pay and then they leave. What uh, this information block is, its purpose is to pick up some of the data about the customer who's just gone through the process. And so we'll pick up the cycle time uh, that will be shown in this box. Uh, and then we'll pick up the throughput rate calculation. Well, basically this box provides throughput in units or customers per minute. We'll multiply it by that by 60 to be able to see a throughput rate of customers per hour. So, so that's, uh, uh, and uh, there's a clock uh, at the bottom here in the screen, bottom left bottom of the corner uh, of the screen. Uh, you see, well, this is data from the fast run. Uh, basically that's where you will see the time. So if I go ahead and start the run, and I just did one step, and what you might have seen, and let me slow it down, uh, the animation so that you can see things better. So what you, one customer basically came at time zero and they have gone into the order process. And so the green uh, icon here is showing the, this process is busy at this point with one customer. The other two, preparation sandwich and pay are yellow right now. And so they are showing that the process is idle, or these activities are idle right now. Uh, let me step to one step. And so at time three minutes, if you see at the bottom, at time three minutes, that customer who was here finished the order process and then moved on straight into prep sandwich. And so now they're waiting for the sandwich to be prepared. Uh, while another customers, and I've set the arrival rate to one every three minutes. Uh, so the next customer arrived and now they are placing the order. I'll do one more step. And so now it's time is six minutes. At time six, you had another customer arrive. So the customer who was here finished their, um, second customer essentially finished their, actually, yeah, uh, finished their ordering. And so now they moved ahead, but now they have to wait because the first customer is still waiting for their sandwich to be prepared. Remember, they, the first customer got there at time three. So at time eight is when that sandwich will be prepared. And so the second customer is now waiting. Um, and third customer came and started ordering. So now we have three customers in the system, one at uh, waiting for the sandwich to be prepared, second one just queuing for the sandwich step, and the third one is now uh, placing the order. One more step, uh, so now we at time eight. At time eight, the first customer sandwich gets prepared, so he moves on, he or she moves on to the pay step. 
uh, the customer who was waiting here moves on to uh, getting his or her sandwich prepared and uh, the third customer is still paying. Um, so one more step. And so at time nine, now the third customer has completed the ordering step, one every three minutes, right? So at time nine, third customer completed. Now they have waited, now they have moved to wait for in the queue for the prep sandwich step. Um, and the first customer is still uh, paying. Uh, so remember, it, three plus five, three minutes to order, five minutes to prepare a sandwich, uh, uh, or receive a prepared sandwich, and four minutes to pay. So the first customer will take 12 minutes to complete the process. We are at time nine right now. Uh, so let's, let me move one more step ahead. At time 12, now it's at time 12, uh, the customer completed the payment and walked out. Uh, so the customer has left, so one person has left. The cycle time, as we expected, will be, was 12 minutes. And we have taken the throughput rate multiplied by 60. And, and so that's five customers per hour. And why is it five customers per hour? Because it's based on first customer taking 12 minutes. So it's saying if one customer takes 12 minutes, then uh, then based on that, it's one minute plus one customer per 12 minutes. That's five customers per hour. But that's because just the first customer came through when everything was idle, they took 12 minutes to go through. Now from here on, what will happen if that, well, let's, let's um, move on a couple of steps and see what happens. So now we moved on, some more things moved around and it stopped at 15 minutes. So at 15 minutes, uh, where we are, we have the second customer now at pay. And so the second customer would have moved at so the first customer left the pay prep sandwich at time eight. They had done three minutes of ordering, five minutes of prepping, and they left. At time eight is when the second customer went into prep sandwich. Uh, and so they moved out at time 13 from there, or they, they got their sandwich at time 13. And now they have gone to the payment uh, station. Uh, while Meanwhile, the other customers have come, and now there are two customers waiting for the prep sandwich step. Um, so let me do one more step. And now the second customer has completed. When the second customer completed, that's time 18. And 18 because, uh, oh, actually we have moved a little bit ahead. So, um, so we paused it at 18 where uh, the first customer had completed at 12 the second customer really completed at 17 uh, but uh, we had one more step happen in here but at time 17 is when they completed the second customer took 14 minutes to go through the process the 12 minutes of pure cycle time plus two minutes they had to wait because the first customer was still being um, processed or he, the first customer the the sandwich maker was busy making the first sandwich for the first customer so the second customer took 14 minutes. So this this shows cycle time for the last customer that, that is leaving. I mean, the, the, yeah, the, or actually current customer that's leaving the process. Uh, and then this throughput, as I said, it's based on now that we got two customers done in 14 minutes, one, one, one customer per seven minutes, and that turns out into be uh, about more than seven, a little over seven as the throughput rate. So, so that's how this process works. Uh, so uh, let me do uh, maybe a third customer. And so third customer should leave. First customer left at 12. Second customer followed five minutes later at 12 plus five, 17. The third customer should be leaving at 22. And so next step, we should be seeing the third customer leave. Uh, this, so it, it runs a couple more steps than this. It doesn't stop at 22, but the third customer basically left. And now you see the cycle time is 16 minutes. And why is it 16 minutes? Because every new customer that is now going to come is going to wait two minutes extra. So customers are coming every three minutes. Uh, the sandwich prep step takes five minutes. So for the th first customer, of course, didn't have to wait anything, went through straight. But the second customer, since he came, uh, he or she came at three minutes uh, after the first customer. So they had to wait two more minutes before the 
they can there's they could move to the prep sandwich step the third customer then coming had to wait, wait even two additional two more minutes because the difference of five and three so every time they would it just will keep adding up uh, and so they will keep waiting uh, any additional two minutes uh, to have the prep sandwich step uh, uh, before they can process to or move to prep sandwich step uh, so if we do uh, say another so, so from this we can see now it's 16 minutes for the last customer or the third customer if we go for one more customer it will be 18 sec minutes of cycle time and that's indeed what it is uh, throughput rate uh, is moving up slowly because because first it was based on one customer in 12 minutes then two in 14 three in 16 now four customers in 18 minutes and that's uh, the corresponding throughput rate based on that and so if i now let it run uh, and so you can see the uh, the queue will slowly build up because the prep sandwich is slower and the the first step ordering step is just three uh, minutes uh, so every three minutes one person will keep coming here and they have to keep waiting here because this prep sandwich step is where um, that takes a longer time interestingly you don't see any queue after that because the pay step is four minutes so it works for four minutes and then has to wait uh, before the next customer gets done uh, because every five minutes one customer would come and uh, it will take four minutes to get done from the payment and, and then uh, there would be a gap of one minute before the next customer gets done from the sandwich step and comes through the pay step. So, so that's how this will work. And if we make it a little go run faster, you see the queue will keep building up here because this the previous step is generating or processing people much faster than then step can process. Uh, and so it will just keep building up. So the simulation is running for uh, 480 minutes, so basically eight hours of uh, working time. And so this queue will just keep growing. If I just, at this point, let me, uh, well, I guess I can run faster, but that might also take some time to run through 480 minutes. Likely it's going through pretty fast. Uh, and so you see the queue is building up. You see the cycle time just keeps going by two minutes every unit because they have to wait, wait extra two minutes. And you see throughput rate is uh, getting now closer to um, 12. Uh, and why 12? Because if you are making one thing every five minutes from here, if you stay at the end of the uh, line here, you will see one thing pass or one customer pass come out every five minutes. And so, so really it should be 12, but because we had first customer go take 12 minutes to go through, that's why I didn't quite hit 12 in this calculation. Uh, but if we disregard that 12 minute time in the, the, for the first customer, then uh, really from there on, uh, a customer came out every five minutes. Uh, and so uh, the rate uh, is really 12 customers per hour uh, based on this uh, step, prep sandwich, which indeed is the bottleneck. You can see the bottleneck because that's where uh, there is a line building up. Nowhere else there is a line building up. That's the slowest process in the step, in the process, slowest step in the process. Um, and um, and that's why that determines the rate or the throughput rate for the entire process. So let's go back to the slide and see if we have figured out answers to all our questions. How many customers will be served in an hour? Uh, so, so really that's what we were just talking about, 12 customers an hour based on a bottleneck step of five minutes. And so every five minutes, one sandwich prep would be completed. And so um, in uh, the process will really, based on that, will complete 12 customers in an hour. Which step will have the longest queue waiting to be processed? We just saw that. Uh, the prep sandwich, which is our longest step, uh, would have a long queue in front of them. If we improve the order step and reduce the processing time to two minutes, how will the shop performance change? And so what that's talking about, if we go here, uh, and this order step, which is taking for three minutes right now, if that were to take two minutes, so if we improve the process there, uh, make some process change, 
uh, so that ordering can be done faster, how will the process change? I'm pausing to let you think about it a little bit and then we'll go ahead and run the simulation uh, again. Uh, so I'll run the simulation. So first run when we made with three minutes in ordering time, we have had 94 people complete uh, in eight hours uh, and with the average throughput rate of 11.75, a cycle time of 198. Let me go ahead and run it again with that change. And we don't have to watch the entire process. I'll just uh, turn off the animation. And here it completes. And so you see 94 here, 197, 11.75. So the same number of customers completed, same throughput rate. The only minor change you see is in the cycle time in minutes. And, and that's really coming from the one minute change we made. Uh, and so this, again, every time now, uh, there would be a difference of, so now ordering step is two minutes, prep sandwich is five minutes. So after the first customer, next customer will have to wait three minutes extra. The one following that will have to wait three plus three, six minutes extra and so on. But that one minute difference there in ordering step does change for the 94th customer, the cycle time uh, from 198 to 197. Uh, but really the performance didn't really change because the performance is really determined by the bottleneck step, the prep sandwich, which is still taking five minutes per customer. So, so, so that answers the last question. Uh, now, some of you might be thinking, nobody is going to be taking 197 minutes, which is more than three hours waiting for a sandwich, which is true. And so what happens in real life, you, see, you saw earlier when we ran, there were 64 people in the queue. Now that, you know, the no sandwich shop will have that much room for 64 people to stay, uh, stand in the queue. And so let's change that. Let's say they have uh, about room for about five people waiting inside the shop. And the other thing that would happen when you have uh, um, five people already in the queue, then people coming in would not uh, want to order a sandwich here, there, and they might, unless there is no other sandwich shop close by, but assuming there are other sandwich shops close by, they would rather go and, and order someplace else. And so that can be done using uh, what we call the renege behavior. And so let's say they will renege after five minutes. Essentially, they will stand in the line at the ordering step for five minutes. And if it takes longer than five minutes, they will just leave. Um, so for that, then we have to provide another path. So let me do another path for that. Um, so this will show us how many customers we lose because oh the wrong one i connected from the wrong connector okay so this will show us how many customers we lose because of uh, too, too long wait times so lost customers okay so let me maybe run a little bit in the animation view and let's slow it down. So what's happening here? Hmm, didn't we not place a queue? Maybe I forgot to save uh, the queue length. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's stop here. And look at this one and see. Yep, it now the neg. Maximum queue length, we should have changed this to five. I thought we did and say, okay, let's run it again. So yeah, there's a limit now. You see the green on the top, that means there is the queue's length is limited now. Let me speed up the animation to have things go a little bit faster. And now let me slow it down. So you see every time it hits five, then this turns red, which essentially means it's blocked. So the customer has finished ordering, they cannot move because there is not much room to move ahead. And so the ordering step cannot really take in the next person because this person who's standing on, on, the, uh, on the counter is not able to move ahead. Uh, and so then people have to start wait, waiting uh, for ordering itself. And they, if they wait 
more than five minutes. Uh, once they've waited five minutes, they leave. Uh, and so that's what you're, that's the behavior you're seeing. Uh, the ordering station gets blocked because there are five people in the line. Uh, and so the next person coming, they have to wait. And if they have to end up waiting more than five minutes, they leave. Uh, and so now you see the cycle time is not, will, will kind of hit a number and will stay there roughly because uh, once the system kind of gets full, you, you have five people here, as soon as uh, this goes to four, the next person can move in the into here uh, from ordering step. Uh, and and if uh, they are not able to move from the order queue further ahead in five minutes, they'll depart. Uh, and so, so that way we will not complete as many customers. Um, no, we will still complete as many customers as we were doing earlier, except we will not have a long queue that we were the unrealistic queue that we were having here and unrealistic cycle time that we were seeing here. So let me go ahead and now uh, I guess run it much faster in terms of the animation. Um, and so you see uh, the queue will keep going between five and four. So it stays at the limit of five. As soon as one person moves ahead, another person comes in uh, to take their place. Uh, and, and we see the ordering activity keeps getting blocked very frequently with this red symbol here. Uh, and we also see lots of people are ending up uh, leaving the line and, and uh, not staying. And so that finished this run. So you still see 94 customers. So we have the same number of customers going through because again, the process output is determined by the bottleneck and the bottleneck always had a queue to process. And so they kept processing uh, customers at five minutes per customer. And so we had 94 customers go through. By the way, in 480 minutes, you might say if we have one customer per five minute, y is in 480 divided by 5 which is 96 but the difference is in the first 12 minutes because we when the system is empty the first customer takes 12 minutes to go through uh, and so in the remaining 468 minutes we get another 93 customers if you divide 468 by 5 you will get uh, 93 point something and so that point something customer is still in the system and so 93 plus that one that came in 90 uh, in 12 minutes that's how we get 94. Uh, again the throughput rate is the same again being uh, controlled by the the bottleneck process but the cycle time you see now is 41 minutes now that you can say somewhat feasible people might wait for half an hour 45 minutes if assuming that a very good sandwich place <laughs> that make good sandwiches uh, and and uh, and there's some more realistic uh, modeling on this side on the entry side where people if they take more than five minutes just to order they leave uh, the shop and go someplace else so hope hope that gives a good understanding of the concept of bottleneck and how that determines the rate of output of the entire process